Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Legend here. That uh, sound you hear, the wind blowing through the ruins, is the planet predicting what's going to happen to green over the next five turns. So uh, we have 8.7k dust with another 4.5k coming in after we hit the end turn button. Let's talk about spending. So there's a couple of things that we need to do. Uh, first of all, new cities that we're taking from green don't have good dust buildings because he never bothered to research them. But also... Uh, hold on a second. What I was about to say is, we gotta talk about these regions, but look at that. Look at this thing I just noticed. That's interesting, huh? So blue's at war. Blue is fighting either pink or red. Presumably. I can't imagine blue's fighting. I don't think green has enough army left to do that. But that's, um, that's pretty interesting. My plan was to finish off green on the mainland... Maybe send one army over to take the islands, and then um, focus the rest of my force on carving out red real fast, and then taking blue on. But, if blue's weak right now, a little bit of opportunism may be in, the, in our future. I mean, it worked out so well last time, right? So that's interesting. But okay, let's, let's talk about cities. So I've had these two regions open for a long time, and I haven't taken them, and probably... Some of you have been wondering why. What's going on? Why don't you just do that right there? Why don't you just take them? Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I was thinking. Uh, Broken Lords don't really... How do I want to put this? I was going to say they don't really benefit from taking cities as quickly as everybody else. That's not exactly true. But what I mean is, there's no necessary growth period for Broken Lords, right? Like... With another faction, even if you're settling in the highest food area, even if you have the most dust, it takes a while for your population to build up. So you need to settle early in order to have a city be effective later, because it needs time to grow. With the Broken Lords, there's no need for growth time. You put the city down, and it's effective the moment you put a bunch of dust into it, and no sooner. It won't grow on its own, right? There's no population, uh, natural population income. So, what I was thinking by not taking these is that we've been spending a lot of our dust, we've been spending all of our dust very aggressively every turn, and um, these cities won't be worth anything until we put dust into them anyway. The regions are pretty low value, right? We see a titanium, a single moon leaf, and a, a die. Like, well, this, is not, this is not stuff we need a ton of help with. Um, and uh, creating the cities not only creates a new city that will be unhappy, that all of its population will be unhappy, but it also increases the unhappiness of all the other cities in the Empire. So the cities would be extremely low value for a while until we had dust left over. And on top of that, they might actually reduce our dust income by dropping us over an approval threshold, right? Uh, we're showing 62% content. I'm assuming that we're actually happy and actually getting the 15% bonus, and this is just, you know... You know how this game is about display issues sometimes. So, that being the case, uh, now that we actually have the dust to make these cities happen, maybe this is the time to buy the two settlers. Because it is... I don't know. I, I, I still don't know if we're looking at an expansion victory or a dust victory, but with blue looking weak, the suggestion that we can maybe sweep through and take all their stuff quickly... Maybe an expansion victory is the way we're going here. Yeah, all right, let's 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 grab them. It shouldn't be too expensive to just uh, buy two guys. So I don't know where... I, I guess here we're probably putting down near all the curiosities. Hold on, let's turn on the UI here. Uh, <clears throat> I guess this territory is just kind of garbage. Yeah, like here looks pretty good. Uh, so, that is definitely a settler purchased in this area. Sorry, I thought I saw something strange on the list there. And then, uh, does this settler get bought in Galarath or Couch? Couch, whatever. Uh, you know what? I don't think it actually matters. Now let's buy him in Galarath. 2351 each, huh? Not trivial. You know, those, those settlers, the purchasing them at the high level, it's totally worth the dust, right? So, on our turn, we know pretty much what's going to happen. All of our armies run forward, except this army back here, who has to wait. I'm hoping that pink will just attack green here. 
It'd be really cool if they uh, if they were able to kill that army off. And then I guess this army can just go to the island. Once we once we handle this nonsense, we can just run straight to the island. Uh, I don't know that it particularly matters which one we take first. We're probably going to have to buy some troops in the one to defend it as the other one leaves. And then the two of them together can go after the final island. So we have some money left over. We can just buy heroes. There are not great heroes available anymore. We bought the good ones. But maybe this is something that is worth doing. Just, you know, people to hold the books. The other thing we can do is we can buy more troops on the mainland. I should probably actually... Um, everybody here is out of action points, right? Okay, so we can't do any heals. Uh, you have your action point. I guess you could just attack this army. Get these quest armies out of the way. Oh no, you can't. That's right, there's a cliff there. Invisible cliff. Uh, okay, so none of them need my dust. Honestly, I'm not sure we need more troops. What I'm thinking here is that um, you, you can overinvest in military. And I don't want to do... Well, okay, hold on. Before we worry about overinvesting in military, I suppose what I should do is buy the buildings I know I, like, 100% for sure want to buy. Did I actually run out of glass steel? Is that a real thing that happened? Madness. Right, give me one of these as well. Let's definitely get everybody over here onto dust. Uh, this would be an okay place to build a chapel. Uh, but also, it's actually a pretty large city. A national uh, museum would be good here. Now, that does cost the kinds of strategics that we're using for our units, but also, like I said, I think we maybe don't need more units right this moment. Alright, does this city have... Oh, this city needs, like, a bunch of basic stuff. Definitely don't want to build a chapel here. We can build a burrow. Yeah, sure, just keep building the city out. Uh, mean... What do you need? Yeah, honestly, that's not bad here. And then we can buy, like, a hero. Put him in Kakwag, right? Because these two cities have heroes, yeah. Alright, who wants to hold a book? I guess influence boost one is the best thing we're getting, right? Food efficiency, food boost. Food boost three, ooh. Yeah, alright. You get to hang out in Aquag and... Oh, I have to buy more. <laughs> I have to buy more glass steel. Right. That's why we ran out of glass steel. How much How much is it to put the book on? 17? Ridiculous. What a ridiculous world where I'm out here buying glass steel on turn 94. The things this war has brought us to. Okay book and then I don't think any of the other stuff you can get matters oh this this matters that's important uh, and then also uh, I don't know maybe doesn't hurt to put it on I suppose oh and you have stat points or skill points rather okay 5.1k the dust victory honestly is probably too far away it, it, we probably are just going to um, to the expansion victory. As as far off as that is. Oh, Gala also needs more stuff. Well, dust filtration's not actually terrible here. We have quite a bit of C. And then we'll just bank the rest of that industry. And I think with that, we are ready to move forward. We're finishing Town Criers. So a lot of our dust over the next few turns is going to go to establishing Town Criers. Because uh, we're going to have to buy a lot of Mithrite. Or trade a lot of Mithrite off of Pink, maybe. Hmm. Whether that's viable or not really depends on our Empire Plan's cost. And in fact, right now, we're just... We're only going to make it by a little bit. We may we may need to um, reassign one of these cities to influ uh, yeah, influence temporarily if we want to keep the same Empire Plan. Well, let's, let's hit end turn here. Let's move forward. I don't think there's anything, like, super pressing that I need to do. I'd actually really like it if one of these quest armies would attack me. Yep, 
yeah, there's nothing, like, super urgent. This army actually doesn't want to move until after we see this, <laughs> this army. Uh, that army is fleeing from pink. That's annoying. Pink, catch him. Catch him. You have actual ships. These are transports. How are you slower? That's very embarrassing for you. Your navy is nothing. I've been attacked over here. Hmm. Well, we'll fight. I see their plan. Let's try to get as many of your real units in as possible on the damaged army before reinforcements can move up. Not a bad idea. Uh, oh, we did this, so 1,280 dust for me. Return to these ruins and inspect them for a very large amount of adamantium. Let's make that happen. Uh, well, I guess we gotta resolve this battle before anything significant can happen on this front, because the area of the battle is gonna be blocking everything. Uh, we also- oh, we've run out of Quicksilver. That's not acceptable. I really, I'm actually getting a lot of value out of that Quicksilver. Um, there's 64 available. Currently costs, wow, a lot. Okay, well, we only actually have to buy 53. That was not that cheap. Okay, there we go. Now we're showing us happy again. So, we'll deal with that. We got some level ups. That one's pretty obvious. Uh, you may as well grab Narrative Master. It's a little tricky because um, if you go to Narrative Master, obviously that makes it easy to get up to Cultural Ambassador quickly, but you can't get to Inspirational Leader from there. I'm going to uh, suspect that there's not enough time for us to really get Inspirational Leader going. It's a lot of skill points. Oh, and we finally met Blue. Okay, that's actually really good for us, because it lets me do this. They're at war with green and pink. Interesting. So we could make a friend, but I need some of their land, and also screw the Forgotten, just kind of like generally. So... So then it must be pink that almost took this city. I guess he has a lot of troops. Yeah, alright. Uh, I'll deal with this in a second. Hold on. While I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and run the settlers out, because I, I am going to forget otherwise. Uh, here, it doesn't really matter where we put down, right? It's just be near the river. Like, this spot's not terrible. This spot's okay. Oh, down here's good. Let's do this one. Right in the crook of the river like this. Nope, not auto-explore. This button. Alright, our Empire approval level is gonna temporarily crash, and then we're gonna fix it. So I don't want anybody to panic at the fact that our uh, dust per turn is definitely gonna go down a little bit. But I think right now we have the, uh, we have the time and money to make that fix happen. Okay, so now that that's done, we'll, uh... We'll get that. I know I won't forget those cities because I didn't put anything in their, uh, in their queue, so. Alright, what we want to do here is try to lock up the reinforcement slot as quickly as possible. We will not win a battle in which they're able to bring in all of their reinforcements, probably. Although, actually, the number of real troops over the course of all of, over the, uh, group of all these armies is not that high. And some of these units, like the uh, the Tedeke 7 is actually considerably weaker than the other ones that we've been fighting. I, he's lost a lot of his ability to naturally mine strategic resources. That has a lot to do with it. So we probably want to start as far forward as possible. I know, I get what they're going for here with the starting in the cities for morale, but honestly, like, we are so far past caring about morale, right? Their reinforcement positions are way back here. We need to we need to get up there. So where do I put you? Probably here-ish. This is tricky. It's so much easier to work dust bishops um with stalwarts than it is to work them with riders, because the riders, it's hard to know where they're gonna be on their turn. Okay, Nam Kang is here, and he brought his... What, what does he do? He brought his actual just direct heal. 
Well, the bad news is he doesn't have any gear on, and he's going to heal for, like, ten. But um, he may as well heal because he's certainly not going to do any damage. Oh, I missed some stalwarts all the way over here in the corner. That's annoying. Well, they won't be part of the battle in the first turn. Uh, so you guys... Let's see. They're going to move their hero forward and get a shot off on me. Nothing I can do about that. But I'm going to have my... I'm going to have some stalwarts rush him. You should also rush this guy. The first rider needs to hit this guy from the back to expend his, uh, his sweep strike back in a direction where it's not going to harm the rest of us. And then the rest of us need to, yeah, mess this dude up. Just do whatever you can. Actually, well, the stalwarts probably won't be able to get in, get in on him anyway. And then you should... This spot will be open by the time it's your turn. We should do that so that we can heal the, uh, the hero and the uh, dredge. Lord Peyton Quinn, also uh, completely base stats, but considerably better uh, uh, a considerably be better fighter at base stats. I do not think it is beneficial to us to have Peyton Quinn wade into battle, but we can have him um, move next to our units and provide them some morale. And actually, this guy should also be kept out of battle. I don't want to... I know that the, the um, heal costs are cheap, but I don't want to pay them. Not if I don't have to. Oof. It's a real hit. Okay, a stun. That's awesome. So that guy's just dead now. He definitely will not deal any more damage. Not that it was likely he was going to anyway. This attack I like a lot less. That guy didn't get to do anything, and now we've spoiled that. Oh, man. A zero, really? That's a terrible time for that. Counter. Yay! Yield 418. The good news is the heal will always be for your damage amount because obviously your characters are not going to resist the heal. And they didn't bring in their reinforcements. Oh no. This attack only makes sense if they're bringing in their reinforcements. Well, bad news for them, I suppose. Um, that being the case, I, it almost doesn't matter what we do. This guy's going to get to shoot whoever he wants to shoot. Like, that rider's dead. This guy has free counter, so he's going to kill this rider as well. Oh, he didn't quite. That life drain is actually, uh, actually doing some work. Okay. Well, that was a, that was a big error on their part. So clearly, I, th I think it's pretty obvious, right, that they considered that battle with the combined strength of all of their units when figuring out whether or not to attack, but then they must have used some different, uh, method for figuring out who would actually participate. And the clash between those two things is... Real bad for the AI. They just threw an army away to barely kill a single unit that had no strategics on it. They're depleting our army strength by effectively zero. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, drop the heal here. This army's not attacking anybody this turn. We need that heal. Oh, we have access to the soul burn, which we have not used at all. It is the dust eclipse right now. Units will gain buffs and debuffs until the start of the next turn. Well, it certainly doesn't make any sense for these guys to do that right now. Let's have you... Um... We could just attack the quest army. I don't even remember what this quest is for. I'm a little worried that they're gonna their presence is going to negatively affect my ability to move forward. Well, okay, not enough for it to matter. We still get to get adjacent to the city. Let's just get over here and uh, see what the deal is. They have 11 units in that city, but we know that a lot of them are settlers. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not too worried about that. So, let's have these guys move up. I want to merge uh, the stalwart into this army. So, we're providing 79 siege damage right now. Definitely want 
these guys to get adjacent as well. Alright, 152. So, here's what's gonna happen. I'm not gonna attack this turn. We're gonna we're gonna burn a lot of their fortifications. And then at the beginning of next turn, their remaining fortification value will be b below our siege per turn value, which means their army will jump out of the garrison and attack us because on the turn following that, the siege would start to deplete their health, right? It, it makes sense. If you're going to attack, that's the moment. We want to, at the beginning of the next turn, very quickly move Ipsa Watcha's army away from the wall because... Um, Exid's army still has enough fortification damage to force them out, but I want them to engage with Exid first because he has the skill for the extra reinforcement slots and Ipsawacha doesn't. If they attacked Ipsawacha, it would be a little bit less advantageous for us. And then you, uh, we could just turn this guy around and have at the quest armies. Yeah, I like these, these bodies are not necessary for this battle. I don't even remember what the quest reward was, but let's just get it real fast. So obviously we don't need to manual this. Well, partly it was 47 dust. It was also 40 wine. That's actually uh, extremely worth having. So good on me. Hey, SB, great decision. Great work. You're really good at this. Gee, thanks. Okay, so uh, we got to search some ruins. That's a thing worth doing. It looks to me like these guys are going to try to make landfall north of Mean, so let's get in position to stop that. But first, obviously, searching this ruin. Eh, 350 dust. It's at this point kind of a rounding error, but alright, it's still stuff. I wonder if me being up here is going to change their approach. And then since we're not, uh, we're certainly not using our action point this turn, we may as well heal up. And I'll just chill right here. If they make landfall anywhere up there, we can catch them. We have enough movement. All right, you guys need to grab me some ruins. Actually not searchable from down here. Stupid cliff faces. The, the territory around Glenda was so, so bad for us. I'm a little surprised that that worked out. Alch, for some reason, can't build this burrow. Huh. Did we lose a point of population somehow? That's weird. Right? That shouldn't have been possible for me. Oh, yes, we did lose a point of population because I built a, I built a uh, guy. That's what building a settler does. It takes a point of population out of your city. Okay, never mind. That's not weird at all. That's extremely normal. Maybe the most normal thing that's ever happened. Uh, okay, so now we have a, a bunch of money. Not quite as much money as we had last turn, but some. We also have an open uh, research slot here. Probably we want to go for Imperial News Network. The downside of this, obviously, is that we uh, do not have the Mithrite. You know what? Let's grab State Approved Theater first. This is something that we can uh, we can build toward and get use out of immediately. Okay, so this is going to happen next turn. Do you guys... I guess if you're not using your action point, you may as well full heal your units. So then none of the rest of our dust is spoken for. We we can use this stuff for actual infrastructure. So let's talk about infrastructure. Let's talk about some town criers. Oh my god, I'm out of glass steel. We're only bringing in eight glass steel per turn because apparently none of the northern regions that we've taken have had glass steel deposits. Uh, that, yes, that's actually true. Amaroya was the last place we took that had glass steel in it. Well, Parandy has, uh, has some, so that'll be helpful. But we have enough Mithrite for a single one of these. What is our, what is our best city to put that in? Probably one of the larger ones, right? I guess it's a percentage dust boost, so the answer is the city that's producing the most dust. It's still the capital. Remarkably, despite the fact that the capital isn't even close to the highest population. So, let's buy ourselves enough glass steel to make that happen. And then make that happen. I wonder how expensive this is going to be. 3182. Well, absolutely worth it. And then, you know what? I'm just going to spend 
some dust buying some population and also up here buying some population somewhere i assume we can't yeah we can't afford citizens in big cities like this oh i still have to actually pick a construction for mean as well uh, i guess mean can just make me i would need to get 200 more dust to be able to put up another citizen which would allow me to start work on another burrow we could probably make 200 dust first of all i have this stuff which i do not need and then I actually probably don't want to sell strategics at this point. Uh, yeah, I guess not. Maybe I can't make 200 dust. Everything we own is valuable. Weird. Weird situation. Uh, I guess we can just make some more units. That's the, the only thing the city can build that is like reasonably helpful. I do feel like we're kind of running thin on stalwarts. We've replaced a lot of our stalwarts with riders. And while that is a... In some ways, that's a nice increase to our offensive capability. Riders do not feel infinite the way stalwarts do. The combination of the the high base health and defense values and the soul leech and everything is really powerful. So we're gonna search that ruin next turn. That's all working out. Uh, Giala also needs orders. Well, Giala could build a chapel. That doesn't seem great. I don't know. Build me units, I guess. We don't really even need these units. I just don't have anything else effective to build in some of these cities. Okay, so like I said, right here, we want to pull Ipsawacha back. Oh, did I, did I really miss one? I missed two. Oh, right, the new cities. Yep, sure did. Okay, well, the good news is this is a good way to use that remaining dust. So we have obviously have to do this and this. The sewers need to be set up. Um... Right, Dust Dredger is great here. And then let's go to the other new city and make sure we get this stuff done. And then, uh, actually, probably right of way is next for these cities, right? So devote your tiny, tiny amounts of industry to that, and we'll uh, we'll be we'll be back with you later. Okay, so let's talk about where we are at on the ter in terms of winning the game. In order to win an expansion victory, we have to have 29 regions conquered. We are currently at 13, about to take a 14th. And actually, this number doesn't update dynamically, right? Is that something we figured out? So I'm actually at 15, including my new uh, my new uh, newly settled regions. So it's still a lot. We're still far away, but hopefully it's gonna it's gonna happen really quickly. Uh, let's have these guys back up. Yeah, there's only 52, or only uh, 58, rather, fortification left, so they will come out and attack Exit, and we will crush them with our 16 units. Uh, maybe. Actually, I'm not even 100% sure Ipsa Watch's army will be needed for this victory. So yeah, they're going to attack me. This is the notification that I'm on 15 regions. All right, so that's done. Let's uh, Let's see what the story is with these guys. Story is they're dead. Yeah, they're <laughs> they can't retreat. They're in very poor shape here. We don't even need to auto or we don't even need to manual that battle. Okay, nice and easy. Actually, I guess maybe I should have manualed it because a rider died. Which, well, uh, you know what? That probably was not avoidable. They have a bunch of high initiative archers. Like they were probably going to get to pluck the rider no matter how we did that. But that's awesome. So now we can uh, we can get into the water and get ready to cross the sea. Probably the best place to do that's going to be over here. We want to spend as little time in the water as possible because we're uh, much more vulnerable there than we are in other places, and also we move very slowly across the ocean. So we'll just merge you up. Uh, what is this? Ah, this is pink asking me to come declare war on blue. Are they worried, maybe? Oh, blue just took this city. So let's have a quick look at his units before we make any hasty decisions. Uh, that is a very weak cavalry unit. Their mists are also very weak. Huh. 
These Predators are also very weak. 70 damage, 102 attack. Like, is it possible I can just roll right through him? Actually, Pink's about to start burning some of his cities down. So Blue's going to die either way, probably. But if we declare war on him, we can curry favor with Pink. And actually, um, part of what's beautiful about this is that it's a war declaration that doesn't require me to spend any influence. Whereas, what would be the cost of declaring war on you manually? 187, that's, that's not a huge amount, but... It is influence I'd rather not spend. Okay, hold on. Let's let's resolve this and then we'll figure it out. So Oh, it's doing this thing again. I really I really dislike this mechanic. So there's a single army of a settler in the in the bounds of the city and it's acting like I attacked the Oh no, sorry, the settler's attacking me. So actually this will work out fine cuz I'll still have my action point. Um, and in fact, because this is a defensive battle, uh, I am guaranteed to have my both my armies available for the next one. Let's manual this. Uh, we may see the same thing that happened last time, where they just decline to bring in any reinforcements and allow me to murder their settler for free. But they also might actually do this correctly, and if they do this correctly, which is to say with all of their units, I'm going to want to be in here making it happen. So you probably want to chill out. At least for the first turn. So guys are going to come in here. Actually, maybe I want him to be further forward. I'm just thinking, if people come in via the reinforcement slots, the Dust Bishops may have to run forward to fight them, and if that happens, I want the Dust Bishops to be able to still heal this guy, which means he needs to be on the front line. We don't know what's going to come in, though. The Dust Bishops may or may not go before it does, yeah, this is actually kind of tricky. I'm going to leave it like this. If, if Exit gets taken down at the beginning of the battle, it's not even really a big deal. Okay, they are bringing him in. So this guy could run forward and potentially just drop Exit where he stands. That would not be great. If it doesn't happen, we should probably have the Dust Bishops focus on you. Everybody really wants that Settler blood, but most of you don't need it. In fact, nobody needs it. If we had a unit who was particularly low on health, a stalwart, rather, who was particularly low on health, this would be a good opportunity to get some free healing, but everybody's at full because we just paid for a heal. So I kind of think we're just going to let everybody uh, kind of attack whoever they want. I guess I'm going to have all of the riders go after this guy. Just pin him in place. Actually... This guy's going to run forward and empty that reinforcement spot. We want to kill the Vine Snake if we can. Because I want them I want them coming in off their reinforcement spaces as quickly as possible. Oh, that's a pretty good heal. I was going to say, if you don't get that in one, it's going to be a great embarrassment for our nation. Hey, where are you guys, where are you guys going? Now, the battle's not over. <laughs> Apparently, they thought it was time to go home. That guy ran backward onto a reinforcement flag. They both did, in fact. What an annoying thing to do. Like, there's no reason for them to back up at all, but it's especially wrong for them to back up into a situation like that. So first rider, first rider who can get to this guy needs to hit him from an angle that does not allow for the sweep strike back multi-hit. So I guess to some extent my concern about riders not feeling immortal the way that the uh, stalwarts do, like stalwarts really just do pre prevent or er, present. Like an unstoppable wall of metal marching forward. Apparently you have to manually order people to run forward. I don't think they should be all trying to flee the battle. I mean, I get it also doesn't matter. The units we have up here are capable of handling this, but... 
It is very silly. Um, but that that concern of the riders not being not being as tough is a little bit lessened when um, you have so much max health. Like this guy's been taking real chunks and not really getting any healing for the whole battle. But it kind of doesn't matter because he just like, he came in with 600 health. Are you gonna get through the 600 health? So what, there's some settlers in this garrison then, right? After we take out these militia, is it is it the case that all that's left is settlers? I don't know what this is. This, this is an act of true cowardice. It doesn't matter. Nobody's going to get court-martialed here. I don't care. I'm just saying it's embarrassing. I think we actually are going to empty their garrison. There were 11 units in it, so there should only be one thing left to come through. We have one reinforcement space unblocked, because I don't know why these guys <laughs> ran to here. So with this, we are done with green on the mainland, right? I guess this is the time when we want to declare on blue. Maybe is a little bit fast, but I want to. I want to take the free declaration, and I want to make friends. Fourteen hundred dust for that battle. And no, I was wrong. We did not quite end them. All right, I'm gonna have Ipsa Watcha do the actual attack, and we're gonna not spend the action point. Oh. Yeah, we're still. We're not gonna spend the action point of the reinforcing army. I think mean, we got this, even with the new army uh, coming in. Two real stalwarts, a dust bishop. Yeah, I think we're fine here. Vine Snake 9 is a pretty strong design, though. 370 base attack, 156 damage. That is, uh, yeah, that is serious. These guys have great attack, but still have garbage damage. We're gonna be okay. The numbers are really working out against them. Uh, that's going to have a big effect here. Uh, the numbers, by I mean the number of troops. Uh, actually, this is pretty okay. Yeah, this is a fine... Oh, and they did not choose to bring in that army for defense. Okay, that was easy enough. I'm a little surprised that they just let me take that city. That means you guys are clear to just attack. Hey, hey, stop running. Stop running. Stop, stop running. Very annoying. Oh no, <laughs> my city is going to be sieged. Uh, so obviously, this is pretty bad for them too. It's a little bit better than that last battle actually because they get to all start on the field. But this army is a little bit more capable. Really? Boy, that's some cowardice. Okay, well let's grab this temple ruin. 25 Hyperium is not bad. I was really hoping for, like, 25 Mithrite would have been cool. Uh, you have Rallying Call. So actually, I think the thing that makes the most sense for him is to go back and get more life. Increase the effectiveness of Soul Leech and stuff. Uh, for you, it is absolutely plus damage. For the Lore Keeper, it is honestly probably another point of Narrative Master. The city he's running does have quite a few districts. Yep, our units are leveling up. Um, they're talking about our common enemy, which we sort of still have. But yeah, I think this is this is the moment when we want to press them. So I'm going to have this army move forward into blue territory, and we're just going to go for it. I can't attack them this turn, but I can siege Biegal and prevent it from gaining any fortification, and then attack the city next turn and maybe get some of these guys. Uh, can you... you can't really move around to a position where you can grab that, I suppose. Uh, 
suppose the thing that makes the most sense is for me to just be here. Uh, I would like to issue a counter proposal. I will declare war on blue. Will you give me something in exchange? How much of your mithrite can I get from you? This is paying 56 influence for some amount of mithrite. Ooh, it's not even very much. Man, is, is 56 influence worth 6 mithrite? Or rather, the other way around is the question. Fifty-six is a pretty small amount. Yeah. Alright. They pay for the part of that that they offered, I pay for the part that I offered. Yeah, we may as well move as deep into their territory as possible. We have ruins to search. Okay. So this is going swimmingly. This, uh, this, uh, this thing where I accept the additional war may have been a little aggressive. I can see why you might think something like that. How are we doing on approval? We're probably content for now. Uh, the completion of state-approved theater will help a lot. And of course, obviously, uh, we'll rise to happy again as ownership goes up. We have a lot of low ownership cities in the northern part of the empire. They retreated. It's probably not a good idea to bring this army all the way forward to declare on them. I don't, I don't know that this army is capable of taking that army even in that state. Okay, got ourselves 50 adamantium, which is awesome, and also 250 dust, and now we gotta talk about decisions with this army. I guess we just bring them forward, not into attack range, but just forward. So the first thing we want to do on this coming turn is attack... Huh. Maybe I want... Maybe on this coming turn I want to lead these guys in an attack on blue... We just buy some units for Parandi or uh, Kakwag's garrisons and initiate the attack on green with this army with some backup because they actually do have quite a number of guys over here and I don't want to lose to a bunch of weak troops because I allowed myself to get outnumbered. Yeah, that might be the way to go. Okay, so you did all your stuff for the turn. The only person with movement points left is you, and you're probably not going anywhere. We could get out here, but we wouldn't be able to get back. And I, yeah, I think I want this army around to uh, to attack these guys. So let's talk about Harmonite. Harmonite? Hyperium. That's the one I want. I looked at this unit as I started speaking. We definitely have har we definitely have enough Hyperium to equip some units with it, so I think maybe we want to change up our unit designs and see about putting Hyperium gear on people. Is it actually like a big benefit? 33 life, 15% defense. Honestly, this is not that big of a gain. I guess the defense is pretty bad for this unit, which has naturally low defense, but also I just don't care about that, like... Unfortunately, it looks like this mostly... Okay, the Greaves are interesting. Plus 20% attack. Yeah, let's do that one. Um, and we can probably do that on everybody, right? I know that for the Stalwarts, the life is meaningful, but they, uh, they want attack even more, I think. Okay, we can't do very many retrofits. But we may as well retrofit the ones we can. That's gonna, that merged all the stalwarts to the same design. It did cost us a little bit of palladium, but now that we're no longer in like frantic troop building mode, I think it's actually fine. Oh, we can build a burrow. Well, let's do that then. Where was I building toward? Uh, probably these exotic exotics? Actually, not super clear to me. Okay, well, whatever. We'll build... We'll build here. That's pretty good. Most of the cities that are, like, part of the established empire are fervent, and so we can kind of do whatever we want with them. Alright, now let's spend some dust making the uh, troops happen over here. 
if this is if we're going to start treating this like a real army, it's going to need a bishop, and we're going to need some real, some actual, honest to god units. Hold on, I need to change the stalwart design over to the adamantium because we have so much of it. Okay, a couple of stalwarts. One more dust bishop is good. So let's see, that is five more units to go with these three. Okay, so that'll be an army and we could like get a general in there eventually. Um, for right now, we have another 3.3k. So let's talk about... We can probably put together another uh, town crier. So, what is the city with the next highest dust uh, dust output after the capital? It is Glanda. So, in order to make this happen in Glanda, we need two Mithrite. Which is actually not that expensive. Somebody is offloading Mithrite at an incredible rate. And we need 25 of this stuff, right? It would be 3182 to rush this, which is which means we need to generate 220 more dust. 222, to be precise. We can certainly sell some of this stuff off, although the, I'm not happy with the price we'd get for it. Maybe we just wait until next turn. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a pain to generate. So, okay. Wait until next turn on that, which means that we can afford to spend all of this dust on other stuff. We could... Push population in the capital again. Get ourselves another burrow. That's actually probably worth doing. Yeah, <laughs> there's 43 dust to be had from this expansion. Seems probably worth the bunny. Get that done as well. And then uh, next turn we're going to... Uh, plow a bunch of dust into the town crier up there. And down here we're probably going to... Um, Buy two more population and build another borough. So I'm pretty happy with all of that stuff. We are at 431 dust per or uh, influence per turn, and we're looking at right now an empire plan cost of 4,300 just to replicate what we currently have. Did I build? Okay, we did not build the national museum here. Maybe we should though, and then just temporarily move the city off to another thing because it it has the both the population and the um, number of boroughs to make a national museum really powerful yeah all right this we'll rush this next turn as well but for right now i might even just do this now it's only an extra 40 yeah let, let's hold off until we have the uh the National Museum up. But we may end up a little bit short. I'm concerned. Okay. With that, I think we are good here. So I'm trying to figure out what has a higher priority on this coming turn. I think with these guys, I want to run forward and just attack. Maybe not draw in the reinforcements because this army is strong. And the point of that is that if this army correctly assesses the situation and flees, we still have this army left to chase them. Um, I think that that's really the reason we need two armies over here is because they have so many um, tactical options as far as getting away from me. So that's most important than this, than other stuff. Things in other places that matter less. Uh, also, we actually have some cities that are done with all their things. Why don't you build that? It's a very small amount of dust. I guess there's no reason for me to wait on that. Here, do this. And where else was it? College. Ah, yes, that makes sense. Uh, here in Kalch, we don't really have a lot. Like, there's not a lot of trivial stuff to build that would be useful. There are things we can build, but they're all expensive. So, dump a turn of dust into a watchtower? Just like, no, it should be a unit. A rider, I suppose, given how far we are from the frontier. 
All right, we're making progress. It's pretty fast progress in terms of game turns, not so much in terms of you know, human minutes. Right, let's do one more turn. Okay, and this just barely will not lock our other army. Come on. Boy, it is really taking a long time to start this turn. Okay, there we go. Get him. Go. Don't let him run. Okay, so now that that's locked up, that's taking care of a lot of the things we needed to do quickly at the beginning of the turn. So let's talk about everything else. This guy is leveling up remarkably quickly. I may have underestimated how much XP he was going to get from all these battles. Uh, oh, he got two skill points that turn. Uh, jeez. Man, maybe we can go for Inspirational Leader. This is a battle thing? Yeah. This is not helpful at all. And the approval gain is okay, but... You know, honestly, it's not like this was a waste. We are actually using his city for influence, and it does have a fair number of districts. All right, who else leveled up? Empty Belly leveled up. Cool. He definitely wants to go back and get Iron Taskmaster. Actually, hold on. We are we are about to see Winter soon. Let's uh, let's gain immunity to the annoying parts of Winter in his army. Because his army is going to be on the road, right? Oh, the dust waters run out. That is a shame. There's enough to run a... Wow, there's just barely enough to run a booster. Okay, we're just going to buy all of the world's dust water. This is going to be a little expensive. Like a thousand dust, but we are going to get far more than that in value out of it. Uh, we annoyed the... Uh, what do you call it? We annoyed the Forgotten, so of course... Now it will be. Now it is time for infinite spying until we remove them from the game, which we absolutely will do, and probably fairly quickly. So I'm noticing this thing happened again, where we have no action point left, despite the fact that literally every unit in that garrison has an action point. So that's fun. Uh, you do not join us. I'd be. Oh, okay. I, what I was about to say there is, I'd be very surprised if they actually take this battle. If I'm them, I retreat here. That's bad. That's bad for them. They, they should not have done this. How do I want to... I want to set up to be pressuring them. It was a little tricky because of the morale concerns. Let's see. They have a couple of units going before me, but those units don't have very impressive offensive stats. I think we're going to be fine here. It's going to take these... It would take units like this forever just to hack through my health, even if I wasn't fighting back. Okay, so let's make sure those guys die. I don't even really want to make guesses about what's going to survive and what isn't. Let's just let them... Uh, let them have at us and see where it goes. Oh, he didn't quite get the kill. You know, it honestly didn't even occur to me that those guys were part of the battle. I saw them up there and I was like, that army is just barely out of reinforcement range, huh? So you can see, uh, this is them building up those marks with their ranged units. Okay, that's a tactic. Uh, so, what I was about to say is those marks with their ranged units make the, the unit with the mark take additional damage from that ranged unit. So, over a long enough battle, you can build up a pretty strong damage bonus. The thing you saw this guy do was he used his uh, Hecatomb spell on, uh, on the assassin right before we killed it. It makes it explode when it dies, dealing damage based on the unit's life rather than its actual offensive stats. Uh, which means that I have to care a tiny bit. Not like a lot. But these units certainly have more health than they have uh, ability to kill us. Yeah, alright, just kind of do stuff. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. How is it that I always end up in a war early on with the guy who has all of the ability to uh, actually fight back? And then after we win that first war, it's super easy from there. 
Why can't we get one of these, like, starter enemies early in the game? Yeah, look at look at how long it takes for them to kill even a single stalwart. I have to say, I do not understand them deciding to attack here. Or deciding to not not flee. I do not understand them deciding to defend themselves here. Ooh, lucky stun. One thing I'm not super clear on is why certain units stun before the attack happens and other units stun as part of the attack. Like, when my units land a stun, uh, we still exchange damage with the enemy, right? But you saw that Bradeki was able to deliver its stun prior... Oh, you know what it is? It's probably that crippling charge capacity that they have. They don't actually have the stun capacity. They have a special thing. The Bradeki crippling charge must happen before um, actual attacks go off. Boy, they're really bringing in everything, too. They're going to lose all three of these armies. I love this thing where they rush forward uh, against my Dust Bishops, which is objectively the correct play, but just, it's still not helping them at all. So we get one hit here and trivially heal off all of the damage that you've dealt to me for the entire battle. Okay, well, that's very bad for them. So I'm just going to take this city now before Pink burns it. No, leave it. It's fine. Don't touch it. Uh, let's see. Can we get down here and prevent this from being burned? Well, hold on. Let's, let's resolve this other battle, which is not going to go the way I wanted it to go. This is just, yeah, that notification. What is that? Oh, I'm not familiar with that icon. They're converting my villages. Uh, yeah, fine. Pink is not really a victory threat. If they want to convert some villages, I'm okay with it. Oh, yes, yeah, so let's do this thing. Murder! They're going to win this battle, but then we're going to pop those units out of the city, and since they do, in fact, have action points, uh, they're going to just run roughshod over these guys. I think we might lose... We're going to lose this guy before he gets a turn if we don't back him up. But actually, we're going to lose him before he gets a turn no matter what. How fast are these? Yeah, the Vine Snakes have 5 move. This guy has 6. This guy has 4 range and 5 move. Yeah, they, they get us. I, I can't really do anything about it. Alright, do your best to focus on the ranged. Let's at least inflict some damage here. Oh, they didn't quite get him. They totally could have if they didn't move a ranged unit adjacent to him. That spot could have been open for the Vine Snake. Okay, we got some damage done. That's something. Uh, then I guess it's this guy is the next most important target. Or the target we're most likely the target we are next most likely to actually kill. Huh. He's fleeing. He knows my plan. Also, I don't actually get to pick targets anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, that was annoying. Let's get this actually resolved, shall we? Uh, do I want to include Ipsawacha? Yeah, he's not actually in range to uh, fight a city or a blue army for the rest of the turn, so why not? I suppose I could just, if I don't do this, I could just um, have him heal, but actually his army doesn't need to heal. Alright, this one's going to work in our favor a little bit better, I think. Let's try to set up to minimize their ability to kill my Dust Bishops. 
Bishops go after this guy. It would be really cool if we could kill him with a minimum of free countering. You're probably not actually going to get to choose a target, but if you do get to choose a target, make it a snake. Okay, clever ploy. Oh, zero, really? There we go, that's a little better. Okay, well I have to think this is a uh, this is kind of turned around on them. Yeah, at this point, even in situations where they have a significant like damage advantage, they just can't get through the healing anymore. We have too much too much health and too much healing on these stalwarts. Okay, so that, I believe, was the last of Green's mainland armies. And now we are very committed to the March into Blue territory. Which is cool and fun. Let's let's be friends with Pink. Let's, let's teamwork, shall we? Also, I actually really have a lot of uh, force to apply over here. <clears throat> so we could move into a position that allows us to... Uh, start hitting their fortifications right now. But I don't know if that's actually a good idea. I can't see the nameplate for that city. Let's see if we can get vision. It's, it's going to depend... Okay, they only have two units there, Garrison. In that case, yes. Definitely get over here and siege. So they've been fighting pink for a while, one has to uh, assume, you know, since we saw the damage here. They probably don't have a ton of force left. They have some fire ships and stuff, but yeah. They have weak units and not very many of them. Man, if I was running around armed like this guy is running around, I would have been wiped off the map many turns ago. The AI, for some reason, does not prioritize killing the other AI. I guess actually that's probably good for us in the long run, because if the AI really did go after each other the way they go after me, I would be, uh, I, we would see runaway victories in parts of the world that we don't have access to a lot more often. Probably. Let's do that. Oh, man, we have a lot of money. So you could certainly use a dredger. You could certainly use a dust depository. We need to rush the town crier that we are building in here. And then we want to come back down to the capital, if possible, and do that and put another burrow in the queue. So, capital is only happy now. It does probably pay at this point to start actually upgrading districts. So a burrow right here does not get us an upgrade, but it does... Um, it does mean that a burrow right here gets us an upgrade, a burrow right there gets us an upgrade. Yeah, it's a setup play. But since this one doesn't get us an upgrade anyway, we may as well make the play here and gain more dust directly. Yeah, that's probably true. And we need to be thinking about our empire-wide approval level boosters, like anywhere that we can. And we also, you know, this is going to come up. Oh, we should also check uh, assimilations. We have a lot more territory than we used to. So we now we're now on five Ursus villages as an assimilation option. We still have three Eyeless ones, and that actually may even be worth grabbing the second uh, extra assimilation slot tech. But we're going to get state-approved theater. Yeah, I, I think this is worth picking up. Although I'm not uh, not actually certain that we have the influence to take advantage of all these things. And right, I was going to rush this museum, and I forgot. Well. You know what we could do? We could probably just sell a unit. Do I have, like, a basic rider somewhere that I don't mind parting with? Alright, you can only sell units when you're in your own regions. Well, is it worth doing? My units are pretty valuable. And some of these guys are, like, they're level 10. They're, like, extremely good, actually. No, I shouldn't sell these. We should just wait another turn. I'm... 
kind of getting close to my influence deadline, though. Yeah, I'll sell this guy. That's a basic rider. And then we'll use that, the proceeds of that, to buy this. And then we'll move all these people over to influence because we desperately need more influence. Right now we're looking at 4590 influence for our empire plan. And we need to get that in three turns, but it's actually going to be more than that, right? Because we are definitely going to take Kentimus next turn. We could actually maybe take Orm as well. Man, we're... We're going to make progress along the coastline here very quickly, and then once we've done that, it's going to be really easy for us to take Red out. Well, maybe it will. I guess I don't actually know that. Let's heal you guys up. There's no reason not to. And then I'll get into the water as close to Green's territory as possible. Hopefully Pink will keep our, uh, our transports safe as we move across the ocean. And if we take one city over here, then we can use that as a staging ground for buying new troops and... We do see that green definitely still has guys. These Vine Snake 9s are actually pretty dangerous. But he's going to be hard-pressed to apply force to us now that he's only on this uh, set of islands and he has to move through Pink's territory to get to us. And Pink is actually able to attack him easily. What is that? Is that... Huh. I thought everybody had the same ship designs. I don't know. I guess we have... Uh, everybody has unique transports. I guess I didn't... I Maybe I've never seen the cultist transport ship design before. That's cool looking. All right. Do we have anything else that we need to do before the end of the turn? I don't think so. I think we're looking pretty good here. So, we made some big progress. Let's take a look at the map. Yeah, we've made some very large progress here. We are at 17 regions now with, with Parandy and Beagle, I believe. Uh, 18... 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 7, 8, 9, 30. So yeah, if we just take... We don't even have to take the islands. If we just take all of Blue and Red's territory, we win. And I think that is probably how we're doing it. So, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time for another video that's probably only three turns long, but, you know, during which we will gain five cities. That's the plan. And we'll see you then.